Welcome to Weekend Walkabout. This is Janet McConovich and Stephen Nicola with GardenAtoZ.org. Uh, you're listening to the third part of a five-part series that we call Plant It Well, Even When the Roots Are Wrong. Uh, this is chapter three. I'm sorry, this is chapter two, where we talk about why it is that nurseries produce poor root systems. Please keep in mind as you go along that this is copyrighted material. In our lifeblood and many decades, actually, of our experience, our photographs are here. If you're going to use it for more than your own personal use, uh, please let us know. You can contact us on our website. Thank you and enjoy the show. You may have downloaded or you can download this handout, this material, which is the outline that will follow today. It keeps us on track to have this and we'll show you as we go along where we are on it. To download this material, go to our website, gardenatoc.org, and in the search field, put in webinar audience. On that page, you can scroll down to this handout or any of the other ones from our webinars and download them. Okay, so now we're into chapter two, why nurseries, why it happens that nurseries grow poor roots. For the past 40 years, since people, marketing people in particular, glommed down to the fact that, that gardens were big business, um, nurseries became consolidated, bigger, and they moved to bigger production practices. And uh, at about that time, in the 1980s, grafting became the way to make new trees rather than seed growing. So grafting went up, seed growing went down. And once you graft a plant, which takes more um, expertise than putting seed in the ground, but gives you the exact tree that you want with the nice red fruit or the nice fall color or whatever you're looking for. Grafting takes more expertise, costs more money, so you don't graft a tree and then stick that seedling out into the field to be trampled by deer, blown by wind. You put it in a pot. And people liked things in containers. It was nice to walk through the nursery and, and look at something that you think you could handle yourself, actually. Yeah. Uh, those ball and burlap gets intimidating. A container, everybody has worked with a, even a small container that's been gardening. Yeah, Paul wants to have a kid on a hip and the, uh, the plant in the other hand and, and leave the nursery right now. And that meant that more and more nurseries said, growing nurseries, production nurseries, of which there are a great number in the country, but far less than the garden centers you might think of as a nursery. These mean production centers produce millions of trees in Oregon, Tennessee, North Carolina, Florida. We do have some in Michigan pr producing in the hundreds of thousands versus millions. So because we have big nurseries trying to get a lot of plants out, twisted roots become the norm and flare roots can't flare. They can't make a stable buttress. So try, try it, try what we're doing. Try put, it, yeah. Put that root system in that, in the pot. So there you've got a new seedling grafted, it's gotten roots and now you're gonna put it in a pot. You're going to stuff the roots in. And the reason that you're gonna stuff those roots in is because people don't want to cut the roots anymore. So that was yarn. This is a actual plant and that's been put into the soil. 14 months after being grafted. 14. So we broke it down and started to take off all the soil. So you have the pointer, not the oh, finger. We broke, took it to there. That's what. That's the graft. That's where it was grafted. That was a well done graft, by the way, very straight. And that and that tree, then that stick that it's grafted on, has to grow flare roots, and it will grow flare roots down in the soil. But look in the size of that pot and the roots that are growing. Where can those flare roots grow? Go no place except down. Down and, down and, and around, Stephen. Around, follow this route. It goes down and around and, and back up oh, again. I was going the wrong way. That's right. <laughs> and those roots are wrapped all around. So just like the yarn, they're going to get stuffed into a pot, wrapped like that, and they're going to wrap again because they can't form that system that they should have, like you saw in the diagrams out in the field. So I took those trees when we got them and I, I unraveled all of the roots, spread them out and planted them with the roots spread out to the side. Those are the flare roots that are forming there. 
One is to the right, I can see a little bit of pink going out horizontally. And then one is down lower, coming out down here. They might look like they're quite a ways apart, but they're only an inch and a half apart. What's going to happen in 30 as they, years? As they thicken. So that's so. how those got planted. And, and that's how much root system was in there. In the old days, they would have taken that plant and cut those roots out at the edge of what the new pot would be and set them into a new pot. But they don't do that anymore. It goes from one pot to the next pot. Without, uh, without the handling that would cost a few cents per plant, and if you add that times a million plants, it's a lot. So that's how those got planted. And that prevented what you see here. Um, we have a little video that's not showing, showing that when you put them in and stuff them in the pot. It actually does twist. Your tendency is to twist it as you put it down. It makes the root, you, you see the roots going in and you look at it and you twist it. Yeah, because they fit in better. And, that, and then this happens, this is a Dawn Redwood. Uh, forget the green string, it was for our demonstration in a, in a class we were doing, but can you see the twist in those roots? And those roots can't change themselves. They stay there, become thicker and thicker, and girdle themselves. This tree did not make it a whole year after being planted. It was in a five-gallon pot, but what killed it was the original four-inch pot. And there's a bigger example of the same thing. This is, a, yeah, this is a mugo pine, 14 years in the ground, and still the twisted roots. They can't go anywhere. Uh, a potting without root pruning, that's just what we, it right, results because, in the twists inside of twists right, because over you have the, and over. Right, you get the first pot twisted and then they put it in another pot and there's another twist of roots. So there's multiple up pots. That little bitty plant gets put into a bigger pot, those roots go to the outside, circle and go down, and then they pot it again without root pruning it, and we end up with twists inside of twists inside of twists. Because this is maintaining costs. They have to contain those costs. Minimal to handling. This is because they think that we want a tree for $5 less. Thus, they almost always sure to become pot bound. And the bottom especially is just packed with roots. Yeah. And they're not root pruned. Um, so you get this kind of look, even on perennials. So what should be an 18-inch root system on a peony or a hibiscus or a baptisia or something with the more woody roots on a perennial is only eight inches across and it's trapped. It, this isn't an a, a indictment of any particular grower. It's, it's, we're not, we're not well, indicting growers. Growers, no, are, growers they're, are. They're in business. They're in business and they're making a plant that works um, and they're not being told that it's not working. We need to tell them. Yeah. So here we're cutting the bottom where, it's, where all the roots have gotten to the bottom and circled around with no place to go, except back up. Some of them are starting to grow up and that has to be cut off. You have to take that off. We were taught to do that so that this twist at the bottom and you can look all the way up. I've actually you scooped stick, out the bottom. Stick your hand up in there almost. Yeah, the roots are all at the outside edge going down. And on the perennials, so here's a hibiscus on the left that I just took out this spring because, well, maybe it's too dry here. This hibiscus has been in two years and it's not growing well. When I took it out, I thought, oh, for crying out loud, can you see that root going horizontally? See that blue line going horizontally? That root was wrapped right around the trunk and all the roots. I took it out. Can you see how it's pinched everything in? Now on the right, there's just the blue line. Now that plant will grow. And they're grown deep, which is another problem. It's, it's stability. Um, because you put a plant into a narrow root space, it's not stable. It tends to tip over and tip out of the pot. And so they put them into the pots deep. And that causes roots to grow above the flare. So they used to do on the right, put fill in the pot, set the roots on top of the fill. Now what they do is put the plant down low and use the soil to keep it from falling over. And especially arborvitaes. <laughs> They're the worst, that. yeah. So see, they stick it down deep so it doesn't fall over. And that's what you get. That's a stewardia, poor baby. You can almost see that it was stuffed down into the bottom of the pots and the roots all came up around it and killed the tree. 
It's a little red bud. That's already been lifted up. That's how deep it was. Yep, it's, it was as deep as the trowel blade. Yep, four or five inches deep and in there's the pot. Its, there's the flare roots. So in a pot, when you open it up, you can see the soil that's been added. And the roots are growing up into that soil. Roots shouldn't grow up. They do it because they have no choice. But those roots that grow up are now going to end up circling around the trunk. And that's what has to be cut. And these are the radial wagon wheel cuts we were talking about a little bit earlier. We'll come back to that. So when it's deep. The adventitious roots will develop. And those guys those, up there. They are not flare roots. Yep, they're not. They will not develop into flare roots. They will not. And the flare roots will be suppressed because there are roots growing up above. So they should grow out. Instead, there's, there's adventitious roots and those flare roots are trapped in a circular pattern down below. And the plant's unstable. And this is not just Janet's childish drawing. No, we this is a real this. plant. This is a willow tree, 10 years in the ground. Can you see the thin ropes sticking out from up high? Those are adventitious roots because the tree was buried that deep. The flare roots are down there trapped together. I won't show you the terrible butchery that we did to chisel through those roots to release them, but we put them in and for five years, the tree then stood up by itself without falling over until, and it was 25 feet tall, until a storm came through and finally knocked it down. Yep, it just didn't have the ability to be stable. Yep, so the problem with those adventitious roots and the roots that circle back up from the bottom is that they girdle the trunk. They go around, come up, and then the trunk ends up constricted. And if it, the trunk is constricted, it can't grow. The growth it is constricted. Dies. The tree dies. Here's a little bitty plant, little bitty dwarf uh, juniper in a yeah. four inch pot. There it is on the left in the pot. Isn't it cute? Most people would take it and plant it just like that. Take a look at how much root was in there when I rinsed the roots and pulled them out. And the trunk, the blue arrow is the trunk, was entirely buried. buried. It was right at ground level, you could see. It so why split. did your little dwarf conifer not make it? Because the roots were, were wrapped around the trunk and because the trunk was rotting under the soil. Here's a sassafras tree. Uh, it's about a one inch caliper tree and its roots circled around when it was in about a four inch pot. Can you see that out from the trunk? Everything circles around at this level here. There's the size of the pot that caused this girdle. And that root that's up there is not a flare root. That root is wrapped right around the trunk. Can you see the groove? Can you see the groove? It's killing the tree. We took it off, we planted the tree. It grew for, well, son, you could tell us, a year, two years, but it really was too bad. Yeah, it was hurt. too badly hurt. We tried. This hemlock was in the ground. Chris may be with us now and could confirm, I think it was in the ground about 10 years before he said, enough, it's just not growing well. I said, could I take the trunk out, of the stump out, would you mind? And you can see the girdling roots right around the outside. And the main roots that got turned sideways around the trunk. This poor tree was living on one root that had escaped the mess. And we write about things on our website. If you went to our website and in our search field put in hemlock fails or hemlock, it would take you to this article and show you these pictures that we're showing you now. This is a red bud. And this is a red bud at a client's house. I took it out and rinsed it off. And, she and, then said, he, and then I, he, I said, I am not going to plant this. You take it back to the nursery. She took it back and the nursery person said, well, I'll take it back this time. But I want you to know that's how red bud roots grow. Uh, we are not going back garden, to that particular Garden center person. people don't know necessarily how roots are supposed to grow. And they know if something lives through its warranty period. This would live through the warranty period. It would girdle when the trunk and the roots expanded both in, in diameter until they ran into each other. Because these roots came from you, the bottom. But if you look at this, you can see with the, the horizontal arrow where the last repotting was. See it down there? And that all of those roots have grown up and around into the new soil in the double arrowed um, layer. We gave you this picture at the end of your handout so that you could make yourself a button that says, remember the red bud. And you can tell people you have to cut all those roots off. They're not flexible anymore, those big ones up there. They have to be cut, root pruned. And this tree would make it. Steve was 
Steve is just, I am the he's coward. a softie. He's I'm a softie. softie. I love trees so much. I hate to see them suffer and die, and, I, but I don't have the gumption. I tell people plant smaller. We tell people plant yes. smaller because even when we cut these roots off, so we cut them off down here and get rid of all that stuff up there. This tree may still have a twist of roots that were inside the pot before where the heavy black arrow is showing you. So plant smaller, you've got a better chance to get going. Yep, smaller is better. And we notice it on, on big trees. Yeah, so it, how long does it take before they run into that root? It could take quite a few years. This, this one was 30 years. In the ground, was doing well. And then I looked up and said, why have I got dieback all it, over that suit? It's gun? thin and it had a, a flat side. Yep, you see the girdling root? And, it, and was it was telling us, it was suckering, it was saying, help me get this root out of here. And there's no choice but to, to chisel that root out. This tree, though, it wouldn't buy it much time. It had already gone a long way into, into um, embedding itself in that trunk. And a root will not graft to a trunk. It doesn't happen. It can't happen. The it's not meant to happen. The arrangement of cells is entirely different, so you won't get a graft. You'll just get two comp competing plants killing each other. And this happens all over the country, all nurseries, all sources, all plants. This is in LA. At the Getty Museum. Same species of tree. And you can see that middle one. And if you went to that middle one and said, what's wrong with you? You would see at the bottom. Can you see that alligator tail wrapped around? Um, everywhere. We, uh, we work in a lot of places and this is a problem all over the country, all over the continent. This is a little dogwood tree that um, has its graft union looks like a flare, but that's not the flare. We'll come back to that later because nothing tells stories like trees that failed. And they can do. show you a whole lot of those. You look at a tree, why isn't this growing? It's been in the ground for five, five, five years. Five years, Edie thought. She said, but it's not blooming and it's not growing well. I said, well, Edie, look at it. It goes straight into the ground like a stovepipe. It's planted too deep. She said, well, I, I said, no, I didn't say you planted it deep. It was grown deep. I should have said that differently. It was harvested deep or grown deep. So let's get it out of the ground. Will it be all right? I said, for heaven's sake, Edie, <laughs> it's not all right now. Get it out of the ground. She's rinsing the soil off. Can you see that it's exactly the same thing as that red bud? And all that had to come off. When it did come off, that tree went from growing two inches a year to growing six inches a year. But in the long run, it didn't make it. It failed. It told us it's too far gone. What questions do you have about roots and planting? And, you and we were going to go back to... Go back to? There was one that Michelle had further back. So um, if you buy a tree that has really twisted roots and, and you discover it at home, can you take it back to the nursery? I encourage you to take it back to the nursery, but you may run into the same thing we have, which is they are all twisted roots. Um, I think you should take them back to the nursery and when, when you rinse them off and you've decided you're not going to plant them and say, this is what I have. I've had some people say that the nurseries don't then uh, um, stand by their warranty. They said you shouldn't have done that to it. And I say, stop buying at that nursery then. If they, it, it, same thing with if you take the, some nurseries still to this day take the ball, it, it, the burlap in the cage off, they would void their we'll warranty. Do that. We'll do that and plant it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so we have other things that are going on. I planted some fruit trees. Should I redo? Can you go up a little bit, Steve? Oh. Should I redo my fruit trees to see where the flare roots are? Yes. If you just put them in, if you put them in two years ago and you don't see a flare, if you put them in five years ago and you don't see a flare, find the flare. Rescue the tree. Um, either it's going to limp along and you're going to be sorry for it further down the way. It's probably going to die sooner than it would have and it won't perform well. Or you dig it up and take a look at it. Um, on a very old, very tall maple, there's a really thick root girdling. Would you do something? Yes, either that or you would say, I'm gonna give up that tree. But if you can see a girdling root, it should come out. If, if it's a very big, thick root and, it's, and the tree is already showing symptoms, we'll take you through the symptoms next. If it's already showing symptoms of trouble, you might not be able to save it, but it's the only thing you can do. And it takes a chisel and some work to do that. I found plastic rope around an old red maple. I've cut what gets exposed by erosion. Should I try to dig a little more to cut more? 40 years since it was planted. If you can um, release it, release it. Um, sometimes it's just too late. We have a 
probably a 20 year in the ground service berry here that I know because I've dug around it still has the cage around it. And I've gone in as many places as I can with bolt cutters to cut it, but I don't know if it'll, if it'll help. Should we try to buy bare root when possible? Yes, encourage those nurseries that are growing bare root and say, I will buy from you, buy bare root. Um, at the risk of causing gas, if a short tree in the yard is well loved and pruning the girdling root may kill it, why not just leave it till it dies? Your decision. We just left a beech tree that we hoped we could get all the roots out, but um, I said, you know, here's what it looks like to me. It looks like you'll get 10, 15 years out of this tree, your choice. It won't be what it could be, but your choice. Picking up. A bare root pine and spruce trees next week and a planting tool that encourages all the roots to be planted straight down. Is it better to spread them out if they have multiple root branches? Always spread roots out. There. Do not spread <coughs> them straight down. Roots do not grow straight down. There's just nothing in nature that does that. I don't know where in the heck that came from. That, that does not exist in our area. There may be some in the jungles and different zones, but who I don't think so. I don't think so. They spread out. They and a 25-year-old high-end cherry with the buttress roots exposed. That's right. The buttress roots should be. You should be able to see about it. should be a beautiful part of the tree. Every little kid draws trees that way. If they, um, it's got, a, it's got bleeding bark on a cherry. That's not a problem of roots on a cherry. That's a problem of borers. They get in and the sap, the tree actually produces sap to try to push the insect out. Um, so you need to, to, to deal with the borers, which might involve putting some oil on the trunk of the tree to kill the borers as they come out. But that's a, a different issue than our roots problem right now. Um, best time of year to dig up trees, Steve? Best Any time of year to dig up <laughs> trees and, and prune them at the roots and lift them. What's the best time? The best time, I, when you think of them. When you think of it, do it then. You're going to have to either move up, Steve, or stop leaning I, I, like that. You know? I can't. Should you just plan on taking it back to bare root? We pretty much do think, take things all the way down to bare root. Depends on what we see when we open the pot. We'll show you some of that as we go along. Um, I think we probably need to go on here so that we stay on time because now we have to help people see whether or not you do have problems out there. I need control back on the screen. Oh, okay. There we go. To continue with this presentation, go to Planted Well, Chapter 3, Consequences of Poor Roots.